Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff. In this video, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we're not actually going to be covering any mathematical topic, but I want to show you how you're going to enter some answers now that we're starting into looking at graphing. My math lab has a tool that allows you to draw graphs as you begin to see what they look like. And it's fairly intuitive, but you may need a little bit of practice to feel comfortable with it. So I'm going to share my screen and work some problems where we're just going to explore how to use the graphing tools. Now, on the left, I have uh, just a little Word document open in case we need that. Um, and on the right, I have some typical questions. Now, don't worry too much if you're not immediately sure how I'm getting what I'm getting here, because you'll see that as you go along. So, the first uh, e equation that we're going to take a look at is going to turn out to be a straight line. And what they're going to ask you to do first is to find some specific ordered pairs that work. And you're going to do that by plugging in, first of all, just a zero for X. If X is zero, you're going to end up with simply, let me get a little bigger font here, uh, 5Y equals negative 10, if X is zero. So you can see from that that Y would be negative 2. And I enter a negative 2 there, and I check my answer, and fortunately I got it right. Then it's going to ask me to find another point by plugging in zero for Y. If I plug in zero for Y, then what I would have is 0 equals 2x minus 10. And I would solve that by adding 10 to both sides. So I get 10 equals, equals, sorry, 2x. Oh, come on. Equals 2x. And dividing both sides by 2, you see, I think that would be a 5. And we'll check that. Great. Now, we will discover as we go through uh, this next few sections that an equation written in this form with no exponents on the x or the y is a straight line. How do you graph that straight line in my math lab? Well, first of all, what you I think always will want to do is look for this icon here that says click to enlarge graph so that you can have as big a space as you want. Now, when you open that, you'll see over here on the right some templates for graphing depending on the shape that you believe you have. I believe we have a straight line, so I click on the straight line tool. And you might notice that when I rolled over that at one point it said line tool. All right, now up here in the yellow bar, it will tell you, it'll walk you through what we want to do. We're going to want to plot the points that we just found. So if I move a few things around so I can see a little better, um, one of the points I had was the point 0, negative 2. Notice how the point moves around when I move the cursor. Click on 0, negative 2. That's one point. And then up here in the yellow, you'll see clack, uh, I click the graph to plot the second point. And another one was 5, 0. Notice how the line begins to form based on this point. And when you click it in the right place, it will lock and there's the five counting over. So we've created that line. And if we're happy with it, we click save. If we're not happy, we can clear and start over. But I believe we're happy with that. We're going to save it. And now you see it's drawn a nice graph for me. And I can check the answer. And I got it right. Let's look at some of the other tools that might happen. So this equation right here y equal x squared minus 4, we're going to find out that that shape is a parabola, which we will study. But for the time being, let's just figure out some ordered pairs, much like we did before. They're giving me some values for x. If I plug those in, uh, remember x squared means I'm squaring the entire value of x, including the negative. So negative 2 squared is 4, minus 4 would give me a 0. And if I plug in a 0, uh, I'll get a negative 4. And if I plug in a 2, uh, 2 squared is 4 minus 4, another 0. And it's going to check to make sure that I've got my table correct. Good. And then once again, it's going to give me a chance to graph. Uh, again, always do this click to enlarge graph option. 
And again, this is, you'll have to see this over time, but this particular shape based on the equation will be a parabola. It's basically this U shape. So I click on that here and look at the instructions and it says click on a first point. So just taking them in order, I have the point negative two zero and I click on that. And then I move the cursor and click on another point. Zero, negative four. Look how it at the moment thinks it's a line because we're only graphing our second point. But then graph one more point, and now you see the parabola shape forming very nicely. Click on that point so that the points you click on match what you did in your table. Again, if you think you did it wrong, you can clear it out and start over. But if you think you did it right, click Save. And once again, check your answer. And we're good. Let's look at another one. There's many different tools. Now, we're going to find out in a couple sections that the graph, and, and actually you'll do some by plotting a lot of points soon that will get this for you. When you have a, uh, an absolute value equation, the graph is going to turn out to be a V shape, start chart V. Again, they're just gonna have us plot some points at the moment. Uh, if X is negative three, negative three minus five, and we're looking at an absolute value, so we have absolute value of negative three minus five. That would be the absolute value of negative eight, but the absolute value of negative eight is positive eight, and so the point that we need is the point negative three, eight. And we check that. This time it's gonna ask me one at a time, kind of varies. Uh, plug in a five, um, plug in, this one's easier to do. Plug in five for X, five minus five is zero and the absolute value of zero is zero. Got that. And you'll discover in future sections, there's good reasons to know which values of X to choose and there are lovely shortcuts. If you plug in a 12, you'd be looking at the absolute value of 12 minus 5. That's the absolute value of 7, which would indeed be 7. So I pick that. And I plug in a 7. And I check that. Now, for the moment, trust me, the shape of that graph is going to be a, a sharp V shape. There's a tool to do a V-shape right there. Let's pick that one. And I want you to notice that the instructions are a little different. In the parabola we just looked at, it just said, pick a point, pick another point, pick another point. Just go down your list and pick a point. For the absolute value tool, you have to know where the vertex of the V-shape is, where it hits that sharp corner. Now, it turns out that we can prove that it's at that point five zero that that happens. So I'm going to start by clicking the five zero. And then it says plot another point. So I can pick either one of those other points that I had in my chart. I think I'll pick the negative three, negative eight. Notice that this time. The V shape begins to show up automatically. It like understands that the graph is going to be symmetric and it turns out therefore you only have to plot the second point. That should be negative three, eight. I got it. Oops, oh, I dropped it. Okay, gotta fix it. See, it, do, it is somewhat forgiving if you make a mistake. Negative three, eight, you can start over and you don't have to graph the third point because it understands the symmetry. Okay, I can also edit the coordinates by hand. If you see up here, there's an option to do that. If my dragging and dropping is just not very effective uh, and you just kind of your hand wiggles and you just can't get it right, you can edit the coordinates here and change it to whatever you would like, as you can see. But I feel pretty good about this. We're going to click save and check the answer. And once again, we did fine. This graph turns out to be, I think I may have skipped one. Did I? Nope, I did not. Okay, I guess there's no one coming. Uh, this graph here is going to turn out to be a circle, as you can see. We're gonna cover this in section two. Looking at the form of that equation, and again, kind of trust me for right now, it's going to turn out that this circle is going to have a center at negative two, positive four, and it's going to have a radius of three. 
Now, let's see what the graphing tool looks like for a circle. So again, if you click on enlarge, you'll see there's an option for a circle. And what they're going to ask you to do here is to first plot the center of the circle. So negative two, four, you plot the center first, and click that in, and then you pick one more point on the circle. Now, if this circle has radius three, that means that there would be a point three units to the right of this, three units to the left, three units above, or three units below. Notice how just, I can move this around and pick various points, but the circle forms its shape. What I did is I picked a point three units to the right. That will give me a radius of three all the way around. That should be my circle. Again, you can uh, clear and try again if you mess up. That's how you do a circle. You have to have the center followed by the radius, a point determined by the radius. And once again, we're okay. Ah, this is what I thought we were going to see next. All right. Now, we're going to find out in a couple sections that if a graph has an equation of the form g of x or y equals something or other raised to a third power, that creates sort of a wiggle shape. And let's click on this option and see what that is. So the shape is going to actually look like this. And this tool works just a little bit different. You'll see this as we go along. Here, what we're going to do is rather than plotting points, particularly, we're going to choose the shape and then click the graph to plot a point. This one turns out that it shifts negative 11 units to the left, or yeah, negative 11 units, which is to the left. And actually, it's going to ask me here, it's what it, does, what it did is it just drew my shape centered at the origin. And I will know as time goes by that what happens is this graph shifts horizontally 11 units to the left. And so I describe how the graph is altered down here in this dialog box, stretching it, stretching it vertically, stretching it horizontally, shifting it vert vertically, shifting it horizontally. This would shift the graph 11 units to the left. And again, just trust me on that for now. Hit enter or return, and notice the graph just automatically shifts without you having to plot the specific points. Once again, you so this this is a variation of the tool that you'll see in some sections. In others, they'll ask you to plot points. You save that, you check the answer, and life is good. And I guess that one came up twice, but we're good. So this one would be exactly the same. All right. Oh, no, this is just the showing me the answer still. Sorry about that. So this shows you how some of the graphing tools will work. And I hope that you'll find that uh, very, very useful as you try your homework problem problems. You'll play with these tools and grow more comfortable with them. And it gives you a chance to show that you can graph these without simply just plotting points. Hope that helps.